Hello and welcome to another Code Washed episode. Suppose that you want to have two different processes running on your computer and they have to share data with each other. In this video, we will take a look at how to do that. We will do an example in C using the Boost Interprocess Library, where we run two executables, each in its own separate process and have them use a shared memory. Let's begin! We're gonna be making two executables and each is gonna run in its own process. Let's start by first initializing the files that we need. So we have two folders, P1 and P2, for the two processes and each has a main CPP and a CMakeLists file. And at the top level, we have um, a shell script that will build the two executables and then run each of them in its own process. In the CMakeLists file, we're going to be creating a project and adding an executable. Since we're going to be using Boost, it's important to also include the boost directories and link to the library. We also have to link to RT, the real-time library. We need to copy over the same content to the other CMakeLists file. An optional thing to do is to add support for C++17 or C++20 if you would like to use newer language features. Let's now go ahead and copy over to the other CMakeLists file. Next, open up the shell script and let's add the commands to build and then run the two executables. Here we're running P1 and then waiting for it to finish and then running P2. We will start working on P1 and P2 shortly. Basically P1 is gonna create the shared memory and then P2 is gonna access the shared memory and then delete it when it's finished. Since we have to run this script, we should also add the execute permission to the script file. Now let's open up the two main.cpp files side by side. I have P1 on the left and P2 on the right. Let's start with writing the main function for P1. We'll add print statements so that we can see when main has started and finished executing. Then let's add the headers that we'll need. We need IO stream because we're printing out things. For the shared memory functionality, we're going to be using boost. So we have to include the mapped region and also shared memory object headers. Let's jump back to main. So what we want to do is create an instance of shared memory object. We will pass three parameters to the constructor. The first one is create only, which specifies that the memory has to be created. It should not be already existing when calling this code. The second parameter, we have to specify a name for the uh, shared memory. The third parameter is the mode. So we, we want to be able to read and also write to the memory. So here we're specifying read write. Then let's set the size of this shared memory. Let's set it to 1000 bytes. What we need to do now, after creating the shared memory, we need to map this shared memory into the process. 
once we do this the shared memory is available for use what we'd like to do is to set all the bytes in the shared memory to one so we'll do this by calling memset and providing the address of this region and also the number of bytes okay so the first process is now creating the shared memory and setting all the bytes to one let's now go ahead and write the main function for the second process we'll start out by simply copy and pasting the main function from process one and then doing some modifications there the first thing we want to change is that it should uh, it should basically just open the shared memory it should not uh, create it if it does not already exist in addition it should also only be able to read the memory so like before with b1 we are creating the shared memory object and then we're mapping the memory region to this process. What we'd like to do next is to read out the memory and check whether the, the bytes are set to one. So to do that, first, let's get the address of the, uh, the first byte in this memory region. We can do this by using the get address function and then we will loop over all the bytes and check whether they are all set to one but let's skip the check for now before exiting main we should delete the memory region so let's go ahead and do that and then let's try to build so go to the terminal and call our build and run script. This will build the two executables and then run p1 and then wait till it's done and then it will run p2. Okay, great. So it's working as expected. You can see the printout below. p1 started, p1 done, p2 started, p2 done. Let's now implement the, the check so that we can uh, go over all the bytes and check that they are actually set to 1. We have a boolean variable is error initialized to false and then we go over in the loop and check each byte. As soon as we find a byte which is not 1 we set the variable is error to true and we break out of the loop. Let's also print out this is error variable before exiting the main function. Before we run this, we need to include one more header, CSTD def, which is needed for the std byte type that we have used. And now we're good to go. Let's give this a quick run. Open up the terminal and run our shell script. Wait for it to build both executables and then run p1 and then p2, one after the other. And now it's done and we can read out the results. It seems to have worked like expected. P1 started, P1 done, P2 started, P2 done. And the error is zero, means we did not encounter any byte which is not one, like we expect. So P1 have written one to all the bytes, and P2 has checked that all the bytes are indeed one. Now, 
let's make p1 write instead 2. We would expect that the, uh, um, the check at p2 is gonna fail. So let's build and run again. Okay, so now the error is not 0 as before, it is 1. When the boolean variable is false, we get 0 printed out, and when the boolean variable is true, we get 1 printed out. So in this case, we got 1, means the boolean variable was true, and the check did not succeed. This is expected. P1 has written 2 to the shared memory, and P2 has checked that it is 1. It is not 1, it is 2, therefore the check has failed in P2. So instead of writing 2 in process 1, let's change that to 1, like it was before. What we want to take a look at next is Instead of running P1 and then P2, one after the other, we can run them both simultaneously. The way to do that is, we can go back to our shell script and add an ampersand after the command. While we're at it, we can also change the order and have P2 start first and then P1. We would like to create a delay, so P1 starts and then after a delay it creates the shared memory. And P2 has to wait until the shared memory is created so that it can read and check all the bytes. Go back to main.cpp for P1 and now we're gonna add this delay. First we're gonna need to include two additional headers thread and chrono and then let's sleep for 10 milliseconds after starting p1 so there is a delay of 10 milliseconds until the shared memory is created if we run this now we, we should expect that p2 would get into trouble because it will try to access the shared memory which is not yet created. Let's go ahead and run the code. Now take a look at the printouts. So P2 has started first and then P1 has started we can see that P1 was able to complete executing. As for P2, we don't see the P2 done printed out. We can see that there is some error, some exception thrown. So boost into process exception. So when P2 tried to access the shared memory, uh, the exception was thrown and we haven't caught this exception anywhere, so the program crashed. What we'd like to do next is to actually handle this exception. So let's add a try-catch block. Inside the try, we will attempt to access the shared memory and map the memory into the address space of the process. And inside the catch, we'll print out a failure message. We want to keep trying inside a while loop until we succeed at accessing the memory. Go ahead now and run this code using our shell script. So during this 10 milliseconds delay, P2 was trying to access the shared memory, but it was not yet created. P2 prints out the error message over and over, until finally it succeeds at accessing the shared memory. We can see in the end 
P2 done is printed out and the check has succeeded, the error is zero. We can make a little drawing of this. First we have P2 and then P1. At some point P2 checks that the bytes are 1. But before that P1 actually writes 1 to all the bytes. Now there is another possibility. What about if P1 sets the bytes at a later point in time, after P2 checks them. So in that case, the check will fail. To create this effect in the code, let's simply add a delay before setting the bytes to 1. First let's set the bytes to 0 and then add a delay of 10 milliseconds before setting them to 1. Let's run this. We can now see that the check has failed. To fix this, we're gonna need some kind of synchronization mechanism. P2 should not check the bytes until P1 is finished setting them to 1. This is actually a classical producer-consumer problem, as it is called in computer science. We will cover this in the next video and we will see how we can have P2 wait until P1 is done writing the bytes. I hope you found this video helpful. Leave a comment if you have a question or a remark and I'll see you in the next video.